definitely a couple of different ones here. There's a there's a ton of these. There's a great big one I may show you here in a minute. It's like this one here. It's a kind of put in the back of your truck. And there's a popularity of these smaller ones to people that you know they don't really want to get a pop up. They want to get something like that. And a lot of these are set up here. They got full kitchens in the back of them. Place for a fridge, microwave, everything. This one looks really retro. It's got the uh, the dish for the wheels down there. This here actually says Boondock on it. New camp. They come with a little bitty kitchen, toilet. I'm sure, may even be a shower, mini shower. This is like really cramped. Of course, this is your, this is your bed and everything. You know, your controllers down there. Microwave. You know, what do you want? I don't see a TV in here. Ah, oh, there's a TV right there. <laughs> so it's got it all just mini, 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 miniaturized. Trash cans even, even loaded, built on the door. I actually hadn't seen one of those. versus winter solstice. The middle of the winter, the sun doesn't get as high in the sky and you don't get as much yield on your solar panels. All right? The information on the charge lower and it's more efficient. So you actually spend less power to charge them and you get more power out of them. It's hard to beat. I don't know a single person, and I'm part of lots of DIY forums and stuff like that. I don't know anybody who has ever gone to lithium batteries and said, no, I'm going back to lead acid. It doesn't happen. I tell you right now. If you want to do a lithium upgrade, because that's the best bang for your buck in your RV, these are some things you're going to need to know. A lot of parks, bigger RV parks, Sun Outdoors and some others, uh, have park bottles on them. And these are some park bottles you can take a tour through. In fact, this in here says Winter Haven RV. We might just go through this in here real quick. I haven't been in here. We've got some other park models down there. So let's just, this is like a cross between an RV and a trailer. More what you would find in a regular, regular house. This is actually the one bedroom. Like the floors. Yeah. This would be one that you would set up and then um, leave at an RV park someplace. I want to take you in this one here and show you. This is just a little larger than the last one. Check out that. Interesting. Nice little dinette slash bed. This one actually has bunk beds in it. Huh. You can sleep four in here. It's probably a wet bath. It's what they call a wet bath. Wet bath, of course, has got the uh, toilet inside the shower. Let me see if I can stand up in this thing. No, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't. My head hits the uh, the ceiling fan. A little bitty ceiling fan they got in here. So it's about five, six, I think, in there. If you're if you're a five foot person, it'd be fine. But if you're six foot like I am, this won't fit. Squat down, take a shower. No, I'm good. I'm good. Air conditioner loaded up there. Another nicer fan up here. One directional fan, refrigerator, microwave. Hmm. What else do you need if you're going to just spend the weekend? It's perfect for it. This is one of those that's uh, up on top of your uh, pickup truck. That you would pull it underneath. Of course, there you got a furnace. Got propane here. Regular size propane tank. You can swap that out any Wally World or any place else that has a propane swappables. This has got your bench seating. You could probably get a pedestal to get installed there. That's what I would do. In case you wanted to use that. I don't see a fridge in here. Maybe this is the fridge. Nope. Oh, this is the fridge up top. It's got a mini fridge. Not much to it, huh? Obviously, they put that there for your step so you can step up into the bed. It's got a twin size bed, I think, up in there. It's like a base camp stove. 
you know what that is. I've never seen one of those. It kind of flips open. Probably the gas. There's your furnace. One sink. No shower, no toilet. FYI, go do it someplace else. Hmm. This is the shorter one, obviously. This is like for a six foot bed. If you got a six foot bed truck. This is Montana, which of course is the fifth wheel. Got the island in the center. Indirect lighting. Up top. You got the, how high the ceilings are. Pretty my ACOM, man. My ACOM, I can touch the ceilings, and you can't touch the ceilings in this one unless you're really tall. Looks like the islands. That's the room. It really widens up the room when you got double slides. So you've got here. I'm going to sit down and stare at the TV. The seat's still warm. This is in the direction you're looking. And of course, this is usually pull out beds and that's just standard recliner, so you can't sleep there if someone's sleeping here. That's your net chair. There. And stairs. What's a serious railing here? I don't normally see railings a lot in the uh, little hallways. Good size restroom. Full size. Full size there. Hey, it's turning it off. Just turned it down so. I've never been a, I like the looks of these, never been a fan of this style of sink. They're pain in the butt to keep clean and stuff always rolls up underneath that one. You need a two or three roll. <laughs> Good size room. The bedroom's always so much bigger when you get the double slides. You have to slide there. And you got the slide there. This is the uh, Georgetown. I like the one I've got. I've got a bounder, but uh, it's about this same kind of thing here. I'm not a fan of all the plastic. Color coordination is not too bad, though. The double fridge. Some more cold. And they've got the uh, larger dinette. It's a little larger. I, I say most dinettes aren't quite this this long here. Probably another. It's probably an extra four inches or so. I like the dual recliners. That may be a step up where I need. These have also got the uh, uh, the heat and massage and stuff in the recliners. And you hit the buttons and they just recline. Let's see, look at that. And it's moving back and moving down. Pretty cool. They're actually relatively comfortable. You can always tell the difference between an RV one and regular because if they're manual, your handles are going to be inside. Your handles, if this was a manual one, your handle would be here to recline it instead of out here because obviously you can't get your hand in there. It's a pain in the butt. It's pretty cool. And this, you can see how much more narrow it is than that other one because this has got the single slide. It's got the half bath, so it's got a full bath back here. Look kind of cars, got a half bath in the center. One of those vans. Big van built out, so there's plenty in here. That's actually on a Ram chassis there. This one, not so much. This chair is very industrial looking. Material too. Got the wet bath going on. No. Still a little short. Let's see if I can get in here. Yeah, I can fully stand in there, so that's good. Induction. Induction top. Good for a person who wants to be by themselves. I'd say it's not bad for a single person. Get two people in here, boy, I get, I get cramped really quick. Be okay for a weekend, though. And this van here's got the rear bath. Go around it. Got the bigger tires in it. Go a little, little more off-road. I like the seats, comfy. 
This would be good for tailgating, especially if the weather was a, a miss. This is really for traveling with a lot of people. The bathroom in the back. I like the styling. Think I don't like about them? Price. The price on these, you'll pay as much as you will for a C class, and C class will give you almost twice as much room. And it costs almost as much as the low end A classes, which will give you three times as much room. But, uh, I, I guess if you're looking for a place to park and you, I don't know, to each his own is all I can say about that. That's kind of cool though. Listen, here's got the Power Stroke F600. This was, this was not a Super C. Close, like a step down from a Super C. There is somebody in here. C class has got the, uh, it's called the Omni by Thor. It's still a $200,000 rig. Actually, this one's MSRP is $300,000, but for the show, you get it for $226,000. We got one step down there. That's good. Don't have to worry about moving. A lot of, a lot of TV, big TV way over there. It's kind of a strange place to put it. I guess they just didn't want to mount it there. I don't know, right there would be a good place to mount it. Nice. Good sized bedroom. Yeah, it's got the extra slide. The slide goes both ways. Makes the room look bigger. This is actually a bath and a half C-Class. Probably the first one I've ever seen that had a bath and a half in it. So it's just got that bath and it's got this second one here. Yep. Doolage. Nice. Great example. This one, you can get the B-Class is this much. This is 109. And yet this is a C-Class, which gives you so much more room compared to a B-Class. So I don't know why I'm going to get a B-Class if I could get this for less, less money. Big bunk up top. Mercedes-Benz chassis. Nice. Another bed there, another bed here. You can sleep six in here. Large bath back there. I bet you I can stand in this shower. Let's stand in the shower. Oh yeah, got room up here in the shower. Nice, I like it. Little bitty sink. I need to change out my sink in mine. It's plastic. So this is a comparable B class. This is actually $10,000 less than the C. But you can see it is way short. This has got the pop up too. The old school like the VWs used to have. Let's go stick our heads up. So you could zip that out and give yourself a window. Boy, these are cramped. <laughs> Guess I'm just used to my A class or class A, whatever you want to call them. We've got the, the bath in the back dual doors in case you wanted to be in nature when you peed. If you're up against a lot of trees or something like that, heck yeah, I'd pee like that, wouldn't you? Well, I'd sit down and do whatever. This is also the wet bath here. So you get the shower head right up there. This would be a bed down here. How we say sleep two. Boy, that's a, that's a narrow two. I'd put one person there. And your other two could definitely sleep on top. This reminds me of, um, uh, what are those called, those? Airstreams. It's got kind of a curve to it. Everything in an Airstream's got a curve. <laughs> we just still got a mini microwave, mini fridge, and dual burner stove top from Dometic. Oh, there it is. I thought there was a pop-up. How does that work? I just got those drop down, so you basically the thing drops down and you get you can put up this gate, but it also has a set of stairs here. I'm not used to seeing that. Hmm. This one is a Fleetwood, actually it says Flex. Basically the bounder is what I got. This one's got two full baths in it. 
don't normally see two full baths. Normally you put one shower. Really, would you have two people shower at the same time? So why have two showers? Of course, in a regular house, you could say the same thing. <laughs> so there's a uh, drop-down bunk bed there. Front end. A little better than the other one we saw that had all the plastic everywhere. At least the TV is above the dinette, huh? Nice. Nice idea, TV above the dinette. Hmm, who'd have thought it? Right there's your seating. Of course, once you stick your feet out, no one's going to use anything. So, here's your bath. Bathroom one. Everything's real nice. And bathroom two is in the back. One lady just she commented how much room there is here in the bedroom that she'd rather have that in the living room. <laughs> I'm with you. This looks like a king. Nice. A little bigger shower. I think I'll wash the dryer in here somewhere. That's where I put one. I'll we'll wash the dryer in here somewhere. I probably got hookups in here for one of these. That could just be the standard wardrobe. I don't see a hookup for washer dryer. Hmm. So these are the outside. These are pull behinds. Gosh, they look like a regular old. Good for tailgating. Real good for tailgating. These all fold up like crazy. They all kinds of kind of place to hold your drink out here on the end so you can sit. They'd be good for pulling up behind a. Uh, NASCAR or something going on. A lot of times you see these, they got they got two. They have one here and one over there. Anytime you see these, you know that there is a bed above. So you got a bed that comes down. So basically you have two large bunk beds. And you can sleep another one here. Let's sleep six right here. Good size fridge, television. Microwave down below. Sound system. But wait, there's more. Bath, full shower. Nice. I've got the handy dandy pull out here. You see this is something that a lot of people probably want. Is something like this that gives you more room for your curtain. As long as it still goes inside. You know, as long as it still goes inside there, you want your curtain inside. But it gives you more elbow room while you're inside the shower. Not nearly enough eating places here. Look at this line. This is for pizza, Stromboli's, spaghetti meatballs. That's crazy. This is Saturday. And this is a 40 foot Super C. Full size fridge. That's a room, something left to drink. Definitely Super C, good space. Dual slides, you just get so much more space when you get the dual slides on the right and left. It's got the mid bath. I say mid bath, there's a, there's a toilet and a shower, and a shower looks good. Good shape for the shower. Oh, good, no one came in here with me. It's got the split, so there's sinks on the other side. But it's just got the single. And let's see if there's a washer dryer in here. Nope, it looks like it's a little too narrow for a washer dryer. So you don't get a washer dryer. Oh, time out, time out. Anytime you're walking through an RV and you see louvers, nine times out of 10, it's a washer dryer hookup. Hello. <laughs> Super C's are nice when they got that dual slide on both sides. Even if the slide's only about 18 inches. This other slide here is like 24. You see how much bigger it is. That's more like a slide I got on mine. A nice big wide slide. But they're still, well, they're up there, $300,000 in area. But uh, they're pretty big. Well, this was on a Mercedes-Benz chassis, this big van here. It looks just like a big van, like a, maybe a church van. Except it's good size. See the nice diagram? You got here. Got a screen here so you can open up the side doors and still screen it off. Nice. It's 
a cool touch for a van. You definitely don't see that in most vans, I assure you. I haven't inspected a whole lot of vans. But I haven't seen many of them. That may be the first one I've seen. And it's kind of, there's your galley. How much room is when you go to a van? I don't know, I think if I was going to do this, I'd just go ahead and go up to a C-Class. Save the extra money. Cause they look like they're running about 40 to 50 grand cheaper. Oh, I got one for you. A custom made carrying case too. Bumps <laughs> and flats. Called this guy's Plasty. awesome. Like the road to show, tons of jokes. There's peelers and slicers written. here. Those right here in front Four of you. Four languages right there. Save guarantee. But when you get home, you watch my video. Larry's Peeler.com. Larry's Peeler.com. Check you out. Everything you get tonight with it. Oh look, I got a, a, cop, a cop to ride. <laughs> no reason. I was just going the same way and so was he and he passed me. I was like, hey, can I jump in? He was like, yep. Yeah. You don't gotta worry about going slow with me. I'm actually going yeah. all the way to the end, so this I was drive, ideal for me. It's, uh, it's a hole in the middle. It measures what, the, what size wheel you have on right there. And it's in inches, right? So this, this, this wheel is a 22 and a half inch diameter wheel that we have to have. That's what this so we had a real fun, cool time here at the uh, RV show. This is actually my second day here. Uh, came here today without the wife and the puppy. But I uh, wanted to go back through some places and get some more koozies and uh, ink pens. And uh, chat with some other people about some things, set through some seminars uh, that you saw there. But, uh, will I come back? Yes. If I happen to be in Florida in January again, I will 100% be back. It may be a few years because next year we plan to be in Texas this time. And after that, I plan to, we plan to be in Arizona the year after that in the winter time frame. So uh, it might not be until 2025 we'll get back around here. But looking forward to it when we do get back here. Um, look at see what kind of new things they have look how high that awning is that's like that's got to be 12 feet that's like way up there anyway it's kind of neat to go uh, to see some of these things and see some of the innovations that they have and I like going to see all the uh, different things uh, as far as uh, how they put them on RVs and different things. I'm maybe an RV, RV inspector, I'm really interested in that kind of stuff. I just think it's neat, all the innovations, especially stuff like that. This is the first place I've ever seen a ramp on the back. This, of course, is one of those mini golf carts, so you can actually roll it straight into the back of your RV. Pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna let you go. Be sure to like, subscribe, if you like these kind of videos, send a comment down below. Maybe I'll like, stop off at dealerships and make videos like this, sort of. Anyway. <laughs> let you go y'all take care and be good to each other because you're now leaving the coolest lives rv edition